All right. On the ropes out here with Jaleel Major Hackett. Man, we, we just had a special group come in today, man. Talk about the, uh, the group that came in today to, uh, to work out with you. Um, today we had the uh, Royal Marines boxing team uh, from over in England uh, come through. They're going to be here today. They're going to come back tomorrow. Um, I think they have a competition Thursday. So, um, you know, they came through. You know, a lot of their guys, a lot of different weights and styles came through. Um, and gave us a good work. You know, how did that all come about for you, uh, for them to set that up to come here to round 15? Um, the, the coach of the team and my dad, they've had like a, a nice relationship for a while. Um, I think for the almost going on six years, you know, they came a while back, you know, when I was younger, still in the amateurs, we had got work with them before. So, um, you know, with them coming back now, it's really good. Um, you know, some, some familiar faces, a lot of new faces, so um, you know, it's good to get to work in. You know, uh, you were talking about it earlier, man. It kind of took you back to the averages uh, with the quick clock. Let's talk about that uh, for yeah. a second. Yeah, it, it really took me back to the amateur days with, like, as far as the pacing. And, um, you know, they had the clock on, like, 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, everything felt, like, right and fast. Like, as soon as you kind of get, like, in the groove, it was like, all right, y'all done. And we were, like, swapping out every three rounds. So. Uh, you, you think it was at that pace and at that time because of so many uh, fighters that were in here? Uh, I think so, yeah. 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 Uh, you may even got uh, uh, Antonio up in here today, man. Yeah, it was a you know, wide variety of guys that were here today, man. So, um, yeah, it was, it was great work. You know, we're going to have more work tomorrow. So, um, yeah, great experience. Great experience, definitely. Hey, man, I got to ask you about this, Slim. Now, I don't know, I had tags you in it on Facebook. You know how they was talking about the young fighters, who the next crop of young fighters? Yeah. And so, you know, I jumped on there. I was like, man, my young and Jaleel, <laughs> hey, man, he the truth. So, you know, and then just thinking about that post that you had put up today, you know, from the, I guess, the Instagram? No, uh, TikTok? Yeah, it was uh, somebody on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, yeah so it kind of coincided to, to what I was talking about. Yeah, it was really, um, and the person there, like, basically saying, like, whoever get this kid next, they're really going to have something special. And it's like, you know, slowly but surely, like, the fans are starting to know my worth, you know. Ain't too long until the, the, the ones in charge know my worth. And a lot of them do, you know. With, with this summer, you know, I'll be a free agent this summer. So it's like, you know, now we really... Looking let's let's talk about that, Jadil, because like you said, you're going to be a free agent this summer. And everybody know your splash when you came over with Mayweather Promotions, man. You know, Earl Smith 2.0, the next big thing. You, you've you been on Floyd cards, man. And then we had that year uh, with one fight. And then you see the buzz uh, going on with other young fighters. Matter of fact, you see what's going on with the young and uh, Camille Moe. I think now his third fight, he actually he fought a, a eight rounder in this in this third fight, and just to yeah. see the progression that you see with him and see the fans talking about what's going on with the young boy Jaleel, the WBC youth uh, silver welterweight champion, man, at 147, man, and the things he's doing, eight no seven KOs. Only person you didn't stop that was uh, the fight that you had after the fight, yeah, the and round. you dominated. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um, right now I'm just really, honestly, I'm just staying working, I'm staying grinding, because it's like, at some point, all the young guys, you're going to run out of old guys, and they're going to retire, and all the young guys, the top guys, are, you know, my generation, we're going to be fighting each other, then, then that's when you're going to be like, oh, damn, where he come from, you know, and then the real boxer fans are going to be like, he always existed, y'all just was, Oh, we're looking at them. Slim, Slim, when, you free, when your free agency come up, you're going to be a hot commodity, man. First of all, on the PBC side, let's talk about that. Right now, with Earl, with Earl and them moving up and moving on, man, to the 54, who who, who you see, really, that's going to hold that band at the 47. Yeah, and so really, you got to bring in the next crop, the really next see, wave. I don't really see nobody that, you know, they can throw in front of me where I turn the fight down. There's nobody there you know, between, honestly, the way guys fluctuate the weight, there's nobody between 35 and 54 that, like, if they offer me that fight at 47 for a belt, I would be like, no. It's like, shit, that's, that's my spot. I would hold that bitch down 
So it's like, yeah, it ain't too long until I, I run that mile. Do, let me ask you this. Does it get frustrating for you at times knowing that you have that skill set? You've done the things yeah, that, that yeah, you've yeah, been asked of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been the, a company guy and held it down. Yeah, no, that, it, it definitely gets frustrating. It's like, at times I often have to stop and realize the, the light, you know, the, the light that I'm in, you know, I'm a public figure now. I can't do shit that I did when I was nobody. So I often like, when I see things before I react the way I was born up and how I was raised, I have to remember, like, you know, you got a lot to lose. But yeah, sometimes I don't even be able to hold myself. So it's like, it's better, it's better that now, you know, this summer I'll, I'll be a little bit more flexible, be able to make different moves and stuff. Because I don't want to put myself in a situation where, you know, I do something that I regret. Correct. You know, whether it be with somebody, to somebody, whatever. So it's like, now, right now, we just, you know, I'm just staying in the gym. You see where we are now, we're just working. Staying in the gym, I'm working, I'm grinding. You know. Staying patient, man. You know, with that being said, you know, um, you and you, your dad and Bozy, you know, all have tight relationships. You saw that situation uh, with Boots, uh, not officially on the PBC side, but he was on PBC cards. He was signed, you know, advised by uh, Steven Espinosa at Showtime. And to see, he was in a situation like he knew he wasn't going to get the fights because he wasn't officially signed with Al. And you see everything, what you see at the 147 with Mario Barrios and, and, and that WBC strap. That he decided to move on to Matchroom, you know, for his for his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, like really, honestly, I gotta put myself first, man. You know, I'll be 21 next month, and it's like, you know, right now is is about, you know, right now we trying to set set that like ground level, like the foundation of everything. To where like when I'm 30, 31, 32, if I don't want to do this no more, I don't have to. You know, that's what like right now the easy years right here are important. I don't want to spend these years, you know, just sitting around. That's, you know, that's a great point, Jamil. Um, these are your golden years, your prime years. Yeah, you, prime. Like, like you said, 20 years old, you, you want to stay active every yeah, couple of months. You want to. If I'm, you know, I'm young and I have the ability to fight multiple times a year, three, four times a year, why not? You know, when you get older, it get a little bit harder trying to, you know, make these wins three, four times a year, so you know, you might slow down to like twice a year. But you know, by then, you know, you move the right way by the team that's moving you, you know, you're in a point where two fights a year, you're making enough money to where, you know, you can live, you can put money up, you can invest, shit like that. But like, they ain't getting moved, you know. Is it, is it? One time, you know, one time a year as a prospect, it's like, God damn. Is that, let me ask you, Jaleel, because a lot of people ask me, right? So I'm, I'm going to ask you, man. If I don't ask, people going to say, why you ain't asked, man? A lot of people's like, man, they they see how they move with certain fighters right now. Man. And a lot of the energy is focused on them. Yeah. Does, does that, you just like, I mean, it is what it is. I just got to stay tunnel vision. It is what it is. And it's like, all right, I'm going to give it to you how you want it. Like, I be very ready to fuck these niggas up. Like, I don't be like, that's what they, it, this boxing thing ain't even about boxing no more. It's a popularity contest. It's about whoever the most popular nigga. So it's like, shit. I don't really get into all the back and forth on the net with niggas because I already know where I'm going to take it. They not going to take it where I'm going to take it. So you a pull-up type of guy. You yeah, want to talk, I will come yeah, to your you gym. Talk, we can pull up and work. Yeah. And like, I don't, I don't get how guys, like, they back and forth on the net. You a bitch-ass nigga, bitch-ass nigga. And then they see each other and they argue some more. I can't do that. I've never seen you do that. I can't Only thing you say, if you, if you, you ready to work? You ready to work? On the net, like, when you see me, like, I don't even throw the bitch word around. But if you call me a bitch on the net, when you see me, you better be ready to fight. We're not going to argue some more. Like, niggas say, man, we boxers. We can settle in the ring. Well, we can get in the fucking ring. But a lot of these niggas don't want to do that. And since you don't want to get in the ring, I'm going to hit you in your face outside the ring. And, like, the boxing world don't like that. So it's like, I be trying to, you know, Stay cool and maintain. Remember, remember that a lot of these niggas bitches for real. So I can't bring that to them. They're not going to understand it. 
Yeah, they, they don't really, they ain't nobody saying your name, though. I'm gonna be honest with you. Realistically, Because they I, I know if like, they do, like they you will pull up. They know about it. I'm gonna set it up. Line that shit the fuck up. Line it up. You don't wanna fight me, we can line up some spawn. You don't wanna spawn me, why you even say my name? If you don't wanna fight me, you don't wanna spawn me, why say my name? Don't say my name for pop Because I am, I am gonna fuck you up. Whether we, whether we in the ring or however, I'm gonna get to you. I, I don't. I don't give a fuck. Hey, Janelle, man, for real, man. How comfortable are you in in this today's world and climate of this social media box? Like, man, you cut from the old cloth, though. Very fucking uncomfortable. I talk. I talk to my people all the time. Like, I can't have no big payday. I'm gonna disappear. I have a big payday. I'm gonna disappear, bro. This this new generation ain't for me. I tell my father all the time. Like, bro, I should have been born like. You know, like <laughs> Cause this is some straight bull. This is bullshit. <laughs> niggas, niggas is the new bitches. But listen, and like you know, I always say like, bro, I get some big money, and I feel like I'm done with this box of shit. I'm gonna delete all socials, move to the middle of nowhere, never be seen. Cause I can't do this shit. This shit weird. This shit weird. These, shit weird. These niggas weird. Everybody be really weird. It's like. Nah, man, that shit. Is, <laughs> I can't. I don't even like talking about that shit, man. Shit. Man, I know you don't, man. I know you don't, Slim. For real, man. Cause everybody be coming to me about it all the time, man. They be like, man, yeah, it's time for younger man. But they'll just like be behind him, push him a thousand percent. He done everything they asked. What the fuck? That's what. That's what people say. For real, though. Yeah, man. It's like shit. He said nothing against young mo, man. Much respect, much love. Yeah, but nigga, I, we got we got somebody who already a WBCU champion. Yeah, like I really, I tell people, like, I fuck with bro. Like I'm in my man since the amateur, but it's like, yeah, I've been here. I turn pro shit, 2021. So again. You gonna be a hot ass commodity, man. This summer, though. Everybody gonna be bringing the best. Eddie, Bob. I know, man. It's cool. There's a lot of there's a lot of guys that got the same, like you know. They, they know that this summer is it, and so it's like shit. Yeah, they better bet on the right horse. That's all I'm saying. Hey. You better bet on the right horse, or it's gonna be a bad mistake. Man. I was just telling somebody, man. You know, I came into this sport, everybody in the five days of school. I feel like it's starting to change now, man. You know, this shit different now. I gotta change a little bit. Right? Let me ask you this. How you feel right now? What's some conversations like with Tank like? Because I'm quite sure he feels he feels the same way. We don't really talk we don't really talk about that as often no more. But like right now I, it's kinda like a whole different approach on shit. What's like, the approach now? The LeBron days, the boxing thing was like, it was cool. It, it, it ran its course. Now I feel like I ain't even that no more. I'm a motherfucking Zebo. Compare myself to a Hooper, you keep me that same analogy. I'm the Zebo of this boxing shit. Say that again, big dog. I got to bully the bully. You say you got to bully the bully. I got I to I gotta do all that. I got I to gotta take the tough route. I got to dog these niggas out. And, you know, it is what it is. I like it that way, but listen, I ain't got to put up no front. I ain't got to put up this good good front no more. So, yeah, fuck that shit. I'm be honest, man. I think that's the same thing Tank, Tank felt, man. He like, fuck it. Ain't no friends in boxing. <laughs> I ain't never been no friends in this shit. This shit ain't no team sport. This shit. What you say, when you in that square circle, it's you. You and they, yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm the only nigga getting in that bitch. So let me ask you today, what, what are you hoping for this summer, man? And, and, and do you have anything lined up as far as fights coming up now? Right now, you know, we're looking, honestly, you know, we're looking at a fight in June. After we fight in June, you know, exploring my options this summer. And, you know, I want to fight probably two more times this year after June. You know, so three fights, three fights in total in 2024. And then, you know, we move on. You know, from there, now we're looking at a film. I'm trying to get a film. People always say, well, who you got your eyes on? Whoever got the belts. 2025 is about the belts. Whoever got the belts, so that's who I got my eyes on. So, More than likely, man, you look like with you being in the WBC family and in that route, man, you see Barrio Barrio sitting right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, they call you for that fight. You take it in a minute, I take it. If, if his opponent pulled out, 
Cinco de Mayo weekend, I'll take that fight. You hear that? He said, if his opponent pulls out Cinco de Mayo weekend, he stay ready, he won that fight. I know you would, though. That's why these niggas don't play with you out here, man. <laughs> For real. They know not to. I always tell everybody, man, when it come, to, when it come that time, you're at the house. What's, what's going on with our car car dogs, man? Man, man, them guys, man, they had a great year last year, you know, one of their best years in decades, you know, so um, this this next year coming up, a lot of those guys that played last year, they returned it, so, um, you know, uh, hopefully they had them another good year this year, maybe they win it all. You gonna slide through at um, Blue like two weeks when they had uh, University of Maryland come up there for their yeah, show? Yeah, I may come. I may slide through there. Might as well slide through there. Yeah, the yeah, South right. side. Yeah, that's all right, man. They got a D1 coming on the South. Yeah, you just talking about that. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Uh, yeah, nah, man. It's, I just want to see you know city do better, so that's good. Yeah, uh, yeah D1 yeah. school coming on the South. Fuck with the youngins. I actually like what, what, what Coach Loxley doing um, with the University of Maryland, man. You know, going into different communities in the area. Because yeah, I remember I like he went that. up Morgan and hooked up with uh, Morgan State, and they had a scrimmage up there yes, last yes. week. And now they're going to Baloo. Oh, I think yeah. they're going all through the area because yeah. they need to keep the talent trying, in the area. They're trying to recruit. They're trying to recruit closer to home. We got some of the baddest, youngest, yeah, like they in all sports in this yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. All around. Like, I can honestly say, like, and I always, I, I tell you. The most athletic youngest on the South. You yeah, already said that. You go to DC. South side. All the best youngest on the South. It's south and parts of that North East. That North East. Then you got the ballers uptown. You got yeah, the, the hoopers uptown. Say, if you want that grit, that grind, go on the South. You're going to find it on the South. Hey man, here you have it, man. It's another day in the life with Jaleel, man. You know, because you had did an interview with a, a nigga Texas uh, reporter. Yeah. Because we haven't been doing nothing in a while. People yeah, don't understand, man. man. I'm a mortician, man. I was telling, I was telling the dude, I'm like, man, Zeb, Zeb got action. Man. He got a lot going on. You know, he do the bullies. You know, he do. Shit, I just, let, I just came back from that dog show I was saying, he do last a lot night. Of dog shows, man. So it's like. He be having a lot going on, so like when he do come through, like, I appreciate it, I enjoy it. But like, he be busy, but he had bought it up, and I was like, Oh no, you already, people already know, man. Me and Jaleel, we locked in, man. Yeah, like I, I said, I was like, he bought it up. I said, Man, I got his head. Got yeah, his head until his head come through. Oh yeah, you already know, man. You yeah, already no, know, man. So. Now that um, what's his name, Remy? That's who I did the podcast with. He bought it up. Shout out to Remy. Hey man, shout out Remy. Check out because we had did uh. Day in the life last month, matter of fact, right after you had won the, the WBC youth belt. Man, we did an interview talking yeah, about that. Yeah, so if y'all want to check that out, go in there and check it out. Yeah, nah, shout out, shout out Remy. You know, that whole, that whole group he got on the Twitter spaces that they consistently do their podcast. Well, Twitter talk, I guess can you call it a podcast? Uh, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, really? yeah, I guess we call it a podcast, you know, open space where the fans can interact with the, you know, the fight. Oh. I didn't mean to cut you off. I had to ask you about this. Remember you had fought on the, uh, what, Overtime? Yeah. I mean, um, uh, 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 Red, yeah. Red Out, Red Out. And those numbers uh, were really good, they said, yeah, man. With they the were design. actually great, you know. I know they probably reached out to you to be a part of the event they just had. Yeah, they reached out a few times. What made you say no, Big though? Man, you know, right now, you know. Trying to get your situation yeah, straight, trying huh? Trying to line this situation out, so. Yeah, right now, we just focus on, you know. Stand in shape, do what I gotta do. Let my team handle what they gotta handle, and I handle what I gotta handle. And like you said, he got a fight coming up in June. Then after that, man, big news, man. You can stay at home or making a new home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time to tell. Yep. All the time to tell. Man, I appreciate it, big dog. Hey, man, you going to be hooping this summer? Maybe. <laughs> Watch Lee. Maybe. I don't know, man. You might catch me out Goodman or something. Oh, look. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Well, how the how to switch up for the boss to the good? You might catch me on what? They recruit you? Good you big recruit you? My mom catch me in Drew League. You never know. Man. Oh, you never shit. know, man. Oh, no. Hey, yo, you and Boosie, y'all ever talk about that balling, man? I don't even know. I, don't, I haven't seen him ball in a minute. Nah, we talked about him, you know, but like I said, real life is going on right now. Yeah, with both of y'all. Yeah, right now. Both of y'all. The task at hand.
Hey, well, when are you going back up there again? It's been a minute, huh? Yeah, it's been a while. Man, but it was good chopping up with you, big dog, as always, man. I appreciate you for coming to Again, there you have it, the WBC Youth Welterweight Champion of the World, Jaleel Major Hackett. Crack that top, top 42 with the WBC. Man, and big fight, you got a fight coming up in June, and big news after that, man. With Stay tuned. And life with Jaleel Major Hackett, we out.